Candace Owens speaks on China and America. What's up doing a late night live? Because um, I just had a lot of stuff I want to talk about. But first and foremost, I just want to say happy Juneteenth to everybody who is celebrating Juneteenth and is super upset that I think it's stupid. Happy Juneteenth. Amazing. Woo, feels good. Racism's gone now, right? You got your Juneteenth. I'm just I'm so happy that we can celebrate Juneteenth. I mean, the Democrats have taken everything, but at least they passed Juneteenth. I mean, everybody in the entire history of the world has been a slave, but only one group of those people needs a holiday as a consolation prize from Democrats at the same time that there's, I don't know, anything they could solve. Shootings are up 94%, homicides, this city, that city, but at least they gave you Juneteenth. More power to all of you. I'll be, I'll be celebrating the 4th of July, but um, I don't know, maybe next year we can do another baseless holiday and keep saying that we're just getting more power in this country because our kids are getting dumber, our neighborhoods are burning down. I mean, it's just like, I just, I'm getting tired of the stupidity. Like, it's just like, I don't even care. Like, I've been trending for the last two days and I don't even care anymore. There used to be like an excitement about the fight for trying to wake people up. And now it's getting like, all right, man, cool. Go celebrate Juneteenth, man. Go have a, go have a barbecue cookout, celebrate Juneteenth. Have a good time celebrating your Juneteenth and be, you know what you should do on Juneteenth? You should talk about Candace. You should talk about how upset you are that Candace doesn't understand how cool Juneteenth is. Okay? We're done with the Juneteenth discussion. I really just don't care about it. It's dumb. Enjoy your stupid holiday. Now, I want to talk to you guys about this because a lot of people messaged me yesterday and we're going to, this is for intelligent people. So if you just jumped on here because you want to be passionate about Juneteenth, you might want to get off because now we're going to talk about foreign policy and you can go on to somebody else's live that's talking about how important your holiday is. We're going to talk about China because I did a live yesterday on um, Facebook and people were asking me to do it on Instagram. Uh, you know, this week on my show, uh, we talked about China, me and Jack Posobiec. Uh, who is a wonderfully intelligent human being who has been covering extensively Antifa and T and I both are very interested in China because it is just one of those things that most Americans aren't realizing is that we're running out of time in terms of saving this country. And people are don't understand that we right now have China, which has developed, for those of you that don't know and aren't learning in school, because while you're busy learning about Juneteenth and critical race theory and all this other nonsense, what you're not learning about are the things that are going to impact uh, future generations, which is the fact that this country is going to be radically different and that China has actually put into place a 100-year plan. Uh, their goal was by 2049 to celebrate Mao, the, the uh, centennial celebration of Mao and all of his ambitions was to to take over the world. You can you should look up the Belt and Road Initiative if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. Uh, they've always had ambitions to globalize and to have the world look to China for answers. And at every layer right now in what is going on in America, you should, if you do not have the wool pull over your eyes, see China. Um, everything in terms of why China right now has literal concentration camps um, and they are enslaving Muslims in their country at the very same time uh, their foreign ministers are coming on American soil and they're talking about racism and they're issuing statements about American racism well obviously they're seeking to crush America from the inside out and they realize that if they just keep talking about race all the countries have realized um, that America is obsessed with race and the kids can learn absolutely nothing but if they just keep focused on being angry and focusing on black lives matter um, and they keep funding these race obsessed movement uh, movements they can distract americans and get americans to um not see what china is doing so a couple of things that i want you guys to look up it's probably the most important discussion that we need to be having in this country about in, ter in terms of uh, China's global ambitions. First and foremost, the Spratly Islands. The South China Sea controls about one third of all of the world's trade, right? Uh, the South China Sea uh, is supposed to belong not to China, but China recently just said, we claim the South China Sea and they began actually just building a military island, a man-made military island in the middle of the sea. And they have been posturing against all of the other Asian, Asian countries in the region basically staking claim to it. The reason they want to stake claim to it isn't because they just like the South China Sea, it's because they realize that they can control the trade routes on that sea. They become a threat to the entire world. 
So if you're wondering about a lot of the events that are going on in America and why uh, it seems bizarre that uh, suddenly after Trump won, people began being obsessed with Russia, like out of nowhere, Russia collusion and Russian bots and Russia, 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 Russia. And it definitely came out of nowhere. Obama was in office all these years. No one was talking about Russia in this manner. The answer is obvious. In terms of China wanting to take over the world, uh, China could not take over the world unless it deals with its next door neighbors, right? Uh, Russia and India being those next door neighbors they need to deal with. India has an incredibly large population. You might have recently realized um, that India has been standing up against big tech and trying to get them out of there. And they've been talking about Greta Thunberg trying to create all of these riots in India. The people that are going to be behind that and the funding behind those, those movements to destabilize India, which is a largely conservative country, is China. If you look at Russia, Russia is, if you look at just the map, Russia is China's next door neighbor and it's a nuclear power. So if China wants to take over the world, they need to make sure um, that there is no communication between America and Russia and that no deals are done between those two countries. What they want to do is they want to make sure that they fundamentally weaken America, take America off of the world stage as the world's power. And uh, the best guard against that is a reverse Henry Kissinger strategy. And that strategy is to make sure that Russia and America never communicate.